Hey crew, today we're talking about the differences between the sail right machine and the not quite right machine. We'll even show you where you can buy one of these machines for 60 bucks. But for the first time, I'm able to compare the two machines. So stay tuned and learn something on life on Jupiter. This week, I'm going to be talking about the very manly subject of sewing. Since we've uh, arrived in the United States, I finally had the chance to pick up a portable heavy-duty sewing machine. Jupiter had many projects accumulating that required a sewing machine. And of course, the first name that pops up is the mighty Sailrite. But I was intrigued by the far less costly alternative machines which apparently are the same machine. So for the first time I've got one of each Sailrite Ultrafeed Reliable Barracuda lined up and I'm going to put it through its paces show you the pros and cons to both machines. Alright let's start with general appearance of the machine. Um, the casings are identical. Obviously the color, the sailor has got that, uh, the blue, uh, the reliable Barracuda comes in only in white. There's also a red version which is a more simplistic machine I believe for the sail right. Anyway, um, as you can see all the main components are in the same spot. They're all the same shape except for a few, three or four modifications that the sail right have done. Uh, pros and cons, let's have a look. The top tension adjustment on the sail right is only a plus or minus. It doesn't give you any figures, any numbers, any definite friction coefficient. Whereas the Barracuda gives you some numbers. So I can immediately just go, oh yes, this sewing project with this layer of material requires a setting of six and I can set it instantly whereas this one I have to reset the tension every time because I don't know where it was and by the way you do knock them you do knock them like this when you're moving material around uh, the other big difference on the front panel is the uh, stitch length setting on the sail right you got this nice uh, locking it's a little bit still archaic but it's a, a definite locked stitch length position whereas the Barracuda I mean it doesn't move by itself but anyway that's reverse and that's full forward uh, longer stitch, stitch length I don't really think. See, that's it. I just realized. Ooh. Maybe I don't know how to use this sail right, but uh, to go into reverse, you have to hold it. Because it's spring loaded. Or you have to lock it. Uh, no. Sort of a handful, really. I, I, I'm not convinced by that, that's uh, worthwhile. Uh, this one will go reverse, it stays there, and I and then I go forward. Happy with this one actually. Uh, they are the main two differences. The only other difference that I would mention is the posi pin system. So the other main difference that Sailrite advertise is the posi pin clutch system, which is simply uh, a pin which you pull out in, a, in order to load your bobbin. That way on, only the, uh, the wheel turns, the needle does not go up and down when you're loading the bobbin. I have a similarly heavy wheel on the Barracuda, but whatever clutch system they got going on here isn't working. So when I load a bobbin, 
I got the needle going up and down, which is no huge drama. I'm not going to put my fingers in there. So, following the bobbin winding route in order to create enough tension here, and then we just start. Um, but this one's a little more elegant and a little closer to the domestic machine, which we're all used to. All of us? Some of us. Okay. One thing I should mention, uh, with both these machines, we've got the heavy flywheel. Is it called a flywheel? It's, anyway, it's, it's like a flywheel on an engine. It's a heavy weight that keeps the engine running at low RPMs, or keeps the motor turning. So that, that these heavy wheels enable you to slow so, or so slow. Yeah? <laughs> so, this is the Monster Wheel from Salwright. I think it retails about $125, so that's an extra, and thoroughly recommend that. Uh, the reliable version is called the Cuda Crank, and it's about $119, I think, on the website. So, both these machines have that, and that's exactly what you need for multiple fabric sewing slowly. Also, regarding general appearance, I will say that the Sailorite appears to be more polished, uh, a little more elegant than the cheaper version. The stitch plate and this sliding part here, I'm not sure what that's called. Anyway, stitch plate has measurements. Uh, got a lovely Sailorite emblem there, whereas the Barracuda, blank. But would you pay extra money for a lovely emblem? Anyway, the Barracuda has a handle on top, which you would think would be a handy thing, because these machines are heavy. But that's just the point. These handles, this handle is holding the entire weight of the machine by two little screws each side, and that's only holding the top plate and the top plate is only held on by two little screws to the rest of the machine. So I would never use this handle. So I'm happy with the Salarite to not have a handle. No big deal. Another obvious question would be the motor size on each machine. Uh, the motor on the sail ride is physically a little bit bigger than the Barracuda, but the label says 75 watts. On the sail ride, the label on the Barracuda says 150 watts. Now that may, I'm not the electrician here, this is a 110 volt machine, this is a 220 volt machine, but I thought the powers should have equaled the same. But yeah, this one is double than this one. So I'm not sure about that. You guys let me know in the comments. But uh, physically, the motor looks bigger on the sail ride. It's a little smaller on the Barracuda. Continuing on the electricals, the foot switch on both machines looks similar. Similarly, uh, the, the words on it, it just says electronic, electronic. The sail ride machine on the website boasts a fully grounded machine. Uh, that does not matter to the pedal at all, it's completely plastic, but there are three wires going to the motor. The Barracuda is a two pin plug, only two wires going to the motor. It could be useful to have a grounded machine, it could be useful. So there's a win for the sail ride. All right, let's have a look at the inside. Okay, so this is underneath the machine, starting from the bobbin end. The sail right on the left, Barracuda on the right. And you can see all the parts are pretty much the same, although they definitely look like 
they have different manufacturers. Some of the parts, like on the sail right, seem more refined and a little more polished. This is looking from the top downwards. Similar scenario here. All the parts are in the same spot, it's the same design, but some of the components are a little more polished on the sail right. All right, uh, let me tell you what I learned the hard way with the Barracuda. It seems that Sailrite have identified possible bugs or weak areas in the gearing of the machine. When I bought this, I actually bought this one as refurbished and it was very cheap, $370 US. And uh, I was very happy with that. I bought the fancy box from Sailrite so that it would have a nice box. That's $220 or something, this box. So the box was almost as much as the machine. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted a nice box. So the machine worked fine. We did a, a job uh, stitching the trampolines, repairing the trampolines, and uh, that's sort of heavy duty work. Anyway, afterwards, I sort of had a tinker with things and for some reason the timing went out on the machine and I have no clue how to get it back. Now Sailrite have fantastic videos on maintaining your machine including the timing. Uh, so really check those out, they're invaluable. And so what I learned from those videos was that this hook has to pick up the top thread. It takes it away, it takes it around like that, and then the thread falls off. And that's how a stitch is made. Now, there is a loop from the top thread. This hook has to be rotated far enough anti-clockwise to then catch that loop of thread. My machine was not doing that anymore. I don't know if it was because of the heavy work that I did on the trampoline material, which is a Ferrari mesh, it's uh, really heavy, or because I was tinkering and I've adjusted something that I, and I don't know how to get it back. I tried for days to get the timing right. So the problem I had was the rotation would not go far enough anti-clockwise. So this is the driver, yeah? So it does this. So this driver was not rotating far enough anti-clockwise. I sent a video of this to uh, Reliable and they said, you are correct, the driver is not rotating far enough anti-clockwise. Send it back for warranty. We are no longer in the US. So um, to send it back to the US, it's actually Canada, I think it's Ontario somewhere, would have been hugely expensive. So I uh, I said, hey, it's gonna, you know, how about you send me the parts I need and I'll, I can replace it. So they sent me a new driver. I looked at it and went, that looks exactly like the one I've already got. And I don't, it doesn't, it's no different. I put the new driver in, no different. Still would not pick up a thread. Uh, so my next option was to send it back for warranty. And I'm sure they would have fixed it. They would have tweaked something, adjusted something. Anyway, Sailrite have solved that problem. It's obviously a fairly common problem with these machines. They have... this Instead of this being a pin, they have grub screws. Two grub screws. So that you can rotate that part, tighten it up again, to get a better angle. So I bought, for $30 from Salarite, I bought one of them. Now it's in here, and it's perfect. So I'm guessing Salarite have identified little weaknesses in the basic Chinese machine, 
and they've tweaked them and made them better. I even see in some areas some machined parts which are shinier, maybe more precision, less uh, susceptible to burrs, etc. So, ultimately, I am not disappointed that I paid $375 for this machine. I was pretty pissed off for a couple of weeks there while it wasn't working, but now it's working fine. And all it cost me was $30 to get the new adjustable driver from Sailrite. I did ask Sailrite, I said, I because I buy all materials and stuff from them. I said I am a customer. I don't have a Sailrite machine. I have the Barracuda. Are you able to give me some advice? Will your driver fit my machine? And they just said, I'm not going to give you any advice. That's understandable, but yeah, a little bit annoyed. Anyway, thanks to Sailrite, they had the parts I needed. They fit straight on there. The biggest difficulty I had was getting this pin out on the original driver. I couldn't. <laughs> With the limited tools I've got on the boat, I could not get this pin out. So I just got the grinder and I cut cut this off. And uh, this is the one, this is the new one that Reliable sent me. But I, the old one, I cut it off and the new driver just sat right on. I adjusted at the right angle and tighten the screws and it's been great. Before I start sewing, let's just have a feel of the gearing. This saddle ride is nice. It feels really smooth. There's no clunking. Fairly low friction to be able to turn the gears to run the machine by hand. The Barracuda Oops. Stiffer. Stiffer and clunky. There's grabby spots too. Um, I'll be guessing this is where the Sailrite have identified there's a few gears, rods, that are perhaps more bird on the cheaper version and they've refined those gearings so it's run smoother. That's nice. All right, let's try with electricity. All right, let's start off with the Barracuda and we're just going to do two layers of fabric to begin with. We'll do a uh, long stitch, straight. Okay. I'm not going to do lock stitches, just straight stitching. Let's go. So, initial startup, even Sailrite recommends hand crank it down. It's sort of like, a, I guess, a bit like a compressor or an engine. The hardest torque is required. At, I think it's top dead center, for example. So, yeah, just give it that first help down. Now, I want to vary the stitch length. I can do it with one hand. Reverse, one hand, and I can go backwards all day using two hands. Go forward. Good tension, it's nice. All right, hopefully you can see these stitches. It's the same color cloth as the sun umbrella. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's do zigzag. So we're going to do full length, full zigzag. Start the first one down. Here we go.
see that you can walk it along fairly slowly with no problem. Just after that initial start, you need a little bit more foot pressure to get it going, and then you back it off. But anyway, uh, that's normal stitching on the Barracuda. Pretty neat. Looks good. Okay, let's just do a straight stitch test in the beginning. I've got two different colored fabrics. White for the uh, Salarite and beige. Same color as the machine for the Barracuda. So let's just, uh, I'm not going to do lock stitches, let's just do a straight run. And I'm going to squeeze the foot pedal on slowly to, to see the slow speed control. Pretty good, pretty slow speed. Not sure about the tension. Looks okay. So, typically to initiate the stitch, you got to push it a little harder on the machine and then it races a bit, so you back it off. So, let's just uh, try zigzag. I'm going to go full zigzag, full width, full length. We'll try some uh, closer knit uh, zigzag. So I've brought the stitch length back down to about midway, keeping the same width here. Let's see what that looks like. So, I want to get it closer still, I want to reduce the stitch length, but with the spring-loaded mechanism, I, I have to use two hands, which is, you know, on the Barracuda, I just do that while I'm stitching, I'm adjusting length, so uh, it's a bit annoying. Looks good. Nice. So I want to keep the zag and make less zig now. Did I get that? I'm not sure if I said that right. Anyway, here we go. Sort of buttonhole. So smooth and, and quieter, so it's a lot quieter than the reliable. Right, what else did I do? Well, that's about all I did there. All right. Tension's a little loose here, so I would need to adjust it. But like I say, without numbers, you can't tell what your tension is currently. So that's a bit annoying. So now, big question of how much fabric can I stitch. So let's make uh, multiple layers out of this. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make it nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers. Now, the foot clearance on both these machines are, you know, stated to be identical. They're, they're basically the same machine. Uh, and that is 10 mil, which is not very much. Um, so if you've got uh, piping or, um, you know, bolt ropes or zippers, that can be really hard to get it under there. Uh, so nine layers of cloth fits under fairly easily. But if you've got um, bigger, bulkier things, you can manually lift it up a few more millimeters. All right, let's put uh, nine layers of cloth. Let's go straight stitch, not the longest, but fairly long. 
This will definitely need the first downstroke helped. Get it through the cloth and now let's go. Pretty effortless really. Nice stitching. Nine layers. Do you, do, the zig do you want to see zigzag? I mean it's going to be the same. Oh let's do a zigzag run. You go slowly. You can go fast. Zigzag, nine layers of cloth, and it's pretty nice. You want to keep the speed back a bit, otherwise it, the thread starts to break up, which happened just now. This thread is uh, it's the same brand of thread, A and E, but this is unbonded, and I find that it unravels. Whereas the white one is bonded thread and it seems to be better. I'm not positive about the differences. I'm sure there's some sewing experts out there that can let me know on the feedback, on the comments. So, nine layers of thread and I'm, you know, I like the stitching. It's good. There's one missed stitch there, one missed there. Let's try the saddle right. Nine layers. So we'll start with straight, uh, not full length, but almost. Now, needle is up, I'm not sure. Yeah, needle is up. Let's just see if this has any more strength. The Barracuda definitely required the hand manual rotation to get it started, this one. Same thing. Once it's in through there, we're right to go. Nice, they go longer. Really slow. That's a nice slow walk that. I th that's better than I can do on the Barracuda. Do the old zigzag. Uh, so that much zig. And that much zag. That's yeah, a really nice slow start there. Oh, Reverse. Yeah. Nice and neat. No skip stitches. Impressive. I mean, the skip stitches is uh, on the Barracuda can be just a, a slight misadjustment of the timing, or you know. And I've played with that thing so much, I've probably really buggered it up. But anyway, nine layers of fabric, reliable Barracuda, Sailrite right, Ultra Feet. Comparative, yeah. I think it's they both do a similar job. They both do a similar job. Well, hopefully that's given you some idea of the differences between these two machines. So let's have a chat about customer service from the different companies. I can't personally speak about the Sailrite customer service, although they've been great when I've ordered accessories, materials and that sort of thing. Um, for the machinery, I can't personally speak, but I have heard that they are good customer service. My experience with Reliable, not so great. 
I contacted them about the driver timing issue um, and when they did not answer after two or three emails I called them and suddenly they gave me some attention and I was able to get a email through to the engineer to ask those questions and he the engineer replied fairly promptly and said he would send out replacement parts since then I've installed those replacement parts and the same the problem persisted the, the, the timing was still out um, since then it's been at least two weeks since the engineer wrote an internal email to customer service saying please process this warranty customer service has not contacted me I get the occasional uh, I'm not sure how often it is maybe every week automated email saying we hope you have been satisfied with our customer service if you do not reply we'll assume that it's complete and I reply and I say still waiting for customer service still no reply for the warranty claim I'm sure if I called them I would get the attention and it would be processed however I fixed my machine using a Sailrite driver which is adjustable so I don't want to claim warranty anymore, but I'm just waiting to see how long it takes them to respond. All right, let's talk about the big one. The cost it was big for me anyway. The price of the basic Sailrite machine comes with a wooden base, not this base, a wooden base, 995. Now that's the zigzag machine that we're talking. Same as this, a zigzag machine. 995 for the basic package for the reliable Barracuda 579 but it doesn't come with a base so let's just the sale right quote $130 for the wooden base so let's take that off the sale right price that works out to be 865 for the same machine 579 it's a fair difference. There's 300 bucks difference there. We've already looked at the differences in the machine. If you have a look on Alibaba or other Chinese websites, I'll show you. You can buy one of these machines. It doesn't have the brand or the label, but it looks exactly the same. $60. And you can buy one. It's, this is not a mass order. You can buy a single unit. Comes with a wooden base. Now, there's obviously plenty of risk involved in that machine, but it's only sixty bucks. I mean, the freight might add up from China, but um, I'd be really interested in if anyone has ever bought one of these machines from China. I want to hear your reviews. I've gone pretty safe here with this version of the machine. You know, the Reliable is probably the second most popular brand for the same machine after sale right. So there are about at least 20 different brand names selling this same machine. Brands such as Consu, Family, Alphaso, Texo, Strongarm, Rex, Omega, Mercury, Soline, Skywork, Jamita, Yamata. All sound sort of Japanese and implying that they're high quality, hey? Anyway, I'd be really interested to hear from people that have bought those cheaper versions. Starting at possibly $60 for the same machine. And tell us your stories. Alright, to summarise, I've spent uh, the whole day mucking with both of these machines, um, taking my friends apart, just to have a look at where the things are set, the adjustments are set, trying to just tweak up my machine a bit, because as you saw earlier, on the thick cloth there, the nine layers of cloth, it was skip some stitches. So I actually fixed that. Um, now it's sewing beautifully 
through the nine layers of cloth without skipping anything. And that's the thing with these machines, they are very primitive. Um, and it's all about the fine tuning to get them to sew nicely. Now if I was to pick one of these machines, if I was to know what I know now, before I bought the Barracuda, would I have bought the Barracuda? I feel I've been through so much, <laughs> such a steep learning curve that I, I feel like I'm almost technician level now on these bloody things. So if I had that knowledge before, I would have bought the $60 Chinese version and made the thing work. <laughs> but you know what? The more I look at the sale right, the more I realize that they have sourced individual parts from a different place to this one and they are much higher quality parts. They, I guess the tolerances are better, um, smoother running. This thing runs so smoothly compared to this. Just turning the hand crank is a delight compared to the Barracuda which is very clunky and grabby. So the retail price of these I mentioned 579 this one without the any box uh, is equivalent to about eight fifty. Three hundred dollars difference in the in the basic machine. I think I'd pay it actually now. I think I'd pay it. Um, what I'm more inclined to do is try and find a second hand one because I, the, the the initial cost of this retail is still too much. It is such a primitive machine. It's way too much money for that. As far as the quality goes, it's much better than this. $300 difference? Maybe. But if I was getting a $60 Chinese machine, then we're talking about $800 difference between this and the Chinese machine. I'd go with the Chinese machine. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. This is the quality machine. Uh, again requires all the fine tuning as well and you need to be a bit of a technician to do that I see on the Facebook Salarite group people always having problems with these machines as well but from my experience today this is the superior machine alright guys I hope you've uh, enjoyed this learned something uh, remember knowledge keeps you cruising cheers